Okay, so today I'm gonna to be giving you a major key. And I love starting off certain messages with telling you if they're major keys or not. Most of the, the messages that I share, actually all of the messages that I, sh that I share are straight from the heart of God, but they're not all major keys. Some of them are just words of wisdom. Some of them are just prophetic words. Some of them are just words of knowledge, just to aid you in your walk with the Lord, very specific. But then some of them are major keys. I'm talking about if you take these specific words into effect into your life and you really begin to apply it, it's a major key in the sense where it's gonna unlock doors for you. It's going to unlock doors for you to bring you into the next level of your destiny, to shift you into what God has next for you. Unlock major doors, not small doors, big doors. So I'm gonna share with you a major key today and the reason why I wanted to start off by kind of sharing with you that it's a major key is because this message is for specific people. And I don't say that with every message. And those of you who watch this channel regularly or those of you who are plugged into this ministry and listen to most of the messages that are shared on here or through here, you'll know that I don't say that with every message because some messages are for everyone. You know, I, I pray and ask the Lord to send every single person to certain messages because they need to hear it but then some messages they're just for specific people because only a person in a certain mindset is ready for it if you're not in the mindset to be ready for certain messages or certain keys it's not going to make sense to you you're just not ready for it you're not in that season of life yet and it reminds me of someone I, I read a comment under a message a few weeks ago and someone wrote a sweet lady she said something along the lines of you know, I'm coming back to this message. It's a message that I shared a year ago. It was over a year ago. She said, I heard this message a year ago and I wasn't ready for it. Now I'm listening to it again and it, it resonates with where I'm at in, in life right now exactly. It's speaking to me right now. It's exactly what I needed to hear. And I know there were words that were said in that message that really just helped her um, know which direction to take next, really just helped her um, see things from God's perspective. I'm always saying, come up to God's perspective. But it's because she wasn't ready for that message when she heard it. It wasn't for her. It was for whoever was listening to it at that time. But she circled back around to it over a year later and it hit home for her. And that's what I mean when I say that this message is only for specific people. Some of you, it's going to really resonate. It's going to be a major key for you right now. It's exactly what you need to hear. And some of you, you're going to listen to it and it's not for you. You're going to circle back to it a couple months later, a year later, and it's going to hit home. It's going to be exactly what you need to hear. So what I'm going to tell, talk to you about today is how to be used by God. And the reason why... It's so, it sounds so simple, right? How to be used by God. Most people would think that they want to be used by God, but that's not the case for most people. Everyone who says they want to be used by God, I'm going to let you know right now, they don't want to be used by God. They're saying it because it sounds nice. They're saying it because it's just a blanket statement to throw across things in life as a Christian. But everyone who says that they want to be used by God don't want to be used by God. Do you want to know how I know? Because if you talk to them and you start telling to telling them what the word of God says and you start listing some of the things they'll have to give up, you start listing some of the sacrifices they'll have to make, some of the things they'll have to lay on the altar, you start listing out some of the things that they'll just that God is requiring of them to let go of and give up, then they start questioning you. Then they start wanting to argue against the word of God. Then they start wanting to debate with you. And actually when they start wanting to debate the word of God, you know that they're not ready for, they're not ready to be used by God. Not in the way that they say that they're, they are. They're not ready to lay down certain things. They're just not ready. They're not in that state of mind yet. And this is what I mean when I say this message is for certain people because only certain people who say they want to be used by God, they really mean that. They really mean that to the point where they're, they're getting ready to, they will lay down anything. Their level of obedience is next level next level this is why i pray for those who are in the promised land mentorship on a daily basis every day i go before the lord and i say lord i ask that you honor their faithfulness and their obedience those two things because they're not easy to have they're not easy to walk in having faith in god and, and being obedient to the things of god it's not an easy task it reminds me of i was talking with um someone a few days ago and we were talking about the level of obedience with abraham and he was actually reminding me of how obedient Abraham was and how, you know, this was just the beginning for God doing things through generations and generations and generations to come and setting everything up 
that we read throughout biblical history. But his level of obedience to lay his son on the altar and get ready to take his life was next level. This is the next level of obedience that God requires of you when it comes to him using you, when it comes to being used by God. So major key is, um, well, I'm going to get to that. But first, this is about how to be used by God. And before I get to the major key, I'm going to first take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Um, no, no, no. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, sorry about that, verse 27. Paul says, Rather, I'm landing punches on my own body and subduing it like a slave. I do this to be sure that I myself won't be disqualified after preaching to others. So he's talking about the race of endurance that has to be ran throughout life. Now, we all have to run our own race and we have to run it with endurance. We have to keep going. We have to endure the things of life. We have to endure the things of this journey that we're all on with the Lord. We're all on our separate journey. We're all running our own separate race and we have to do it with endurance. And yet, and what's happening here is throughout this race, throughout this journey with God, you're being used by God. And all of us, depending on our level of faithfulness and obedience, we're being used by God to different, uh, through different degrees, through different measures, two different degrees. Hopefully I'm making sense to you here. So Paul is saying to do this, he lands punches on his own body. He's using an example here of what it means to be used by God, what it means to endure your race or run your race with endurance. He says, like a slave, it means that he's submitting himself to the master. He says, I do this to be sure that I myself won't be disqualified after preaching to others. Paul just gave us a major key on how to be used by God. It means that he's submitting himself to the master. He says he lands punches on his own body like a slave. To be used by God, you have to, I'm just going to put it in, in layman's terms for you. I'm just going to make it plain. You have to empty yourself out. And it's a, it's a daily thing. It's a daily thing. You have to empty yourself out before the Lord. You have to make yourself, this is why I say every, almost every message I tell you all, that I go low. I go really low. That means that I, I bring myself down. I bring myself down so that God can be lifted up. I, I make the things that Shannon wants and things that Shannon desires, I make those things silent when it comes to God using me, when it comes to being used by God. I say, Lord, not my will, but your, your will. I empty out Shannon. I empty out the fleshly desires. I empty out the things that my flesh is crying out for. I empty those things. I lay them at the feet of God and I say, Lord, what do you want? It was just the other day where I had all of these things that were on my mind and I was feeling overwhelmed. And I just had to put a stop to it all. And I had to say, wait a second, Shannon, why are you, why are all of these things making you overwhelmed? Why are all of these things weighing on you? Do they really need to be on your mind? Do they really need to be prioritized? Let's analyze each of these things and really ask myself, why am I wanting to do, why do I feel the need to do all these things, to pri prioritize all these things? Because that's really what being overwhelmed is. It's just having a lot on your mind. But when you begin to dissect each and everything and, and really look at it with a fine tooth comb or a magnifying glass and ask yourself for each thing, Am I doing this to glorify God? Am I doing this to serve God? Or am I doing this to serve myself? Why am I doing this thing? Why is this thing on the to-do list? Why does this thing need to, be, need to get done? Is it to serve other people or myself? Or is it to serve God? And when you begin to look at those things, you are separating what's glorifying God and what's glorifying you and other people. And when you begin to separate those things, you'll see that the things over here that's glorifying yourself and other people they can, you can let those things fall by the wayside. They don't need to be prioritized. You can look over here and see, okay, I'm doing this because this is going to serve God. It's going to serve his kingdom. It's a part of the ministry that God has put me in here while I'm on earth. These things over here need to be prioritized. That's the process. That's what it looks like to empty yourself, to empty your, to take these things over here. That's what you want for you. That's all about self-serving and self-gratifying and just let them fall away. Just let them fall by the wayside and do what it is over here that is serving God and his kingdom. Do what it is over here that allows God to use you and be, be a vessel for God. And as a byproduct of that, God is gonna make sure that all of these things over here are taken care of. And some of these things, you're gonna realize you didn't even need them anyway. You didn't even need to worry about them anyway. This is how you began to get overwhelmed is because 
you're battling with double-mindedness. The things that you want to gratify yourself and other people are fighting against the things that God wants for you, are fighting against the things that God has for you. It's a war on the mind and it causes, this war on the mind is causing pressure. It's causing overwhelm because really your mind can't decide between what's more important, the things of God or the things that you want for you. How you really begin to be used by God, for those of you who are serious about this thing, it takes a level of obedience on another level, or it takes a measure of obedience on another level. You have to empty yourself out completely. It's almost like I'm imagining a vessel that is filled with things. Imagine a vase, right? A vase built, right, by God, shaped by God, because he's the potter. And this vase is full of things that you want full of things that you want for your life, full of all the plans that you have for your life, full of all the things that you want for you. It's just packed to the rim. The rim. God can't pour himself into that vase. He can't come into that vase. He can't come into this vessel, this vessel, because you have it packed with all the things that you want in there for you or all the things that other people say should be in here. Once you take that vessel, this vase, which is you, and you just pour it all out to the feet of God and you say, Lord, some of these things I may need, some of these things I may not need, just take it all, pour it all out. Then it's empty. You're an empty vessel now for him to come in and begin to fill you and use you in the earth, use you in the world for God's glorious uh, will, not your own. Then he'll get the glory. And as a byproduct of that, he says, all these things should be added unto you. All these things that you thought you needed, that you had shoved in your vessel, God is going to give it to you plus more. It's going to be better. It's going to be the things that you want 2.0, right? The next level of it. And some of those things you're not even going to need anyway. You just thought that you needed it. It's just It was just weighing you down. That's how you begin to be used by God. That's the major key. It's to empty yourself. It's to go low. It's to become so low, so, so low and humble. I talked about being humble in the last message, how being humble is something completely different than, um, you know, you can be humble and still show up and be bold and confident in the Lord. There's a difference between that. Go listen to the last message if you want to know that difference. But um, that's how you, that's how you allow yourself to be used by God is to just empty yourself out, pour yourself out to him. I want to say a quick prayer for those of you who the Lord is calling you to do this. And you know that this is for you. This isn't for everyone. Like I said, everyone who says they want to be used by the Lord, they don't actually mean that because when you start asking them to give up things, then there's, then there's a problem with it. Then they want to start debating the word of God. Then they want to start debating the things of God. But this is for very specific people. If you know this is for you, I want you to put it in the comments below. And I want to say a quick prayer for you. I ask that the Lord begins to come into your mind and your heart, specifically his Holy Spirit. And I ask that he will begin to reveal to you those things that you need to lay at his feet. Those things that are just, they're, they're in your mind and it's overwhelming you. But you don't really need to concern yourself with these things. These are things that you don't even need to be worried about. These are things that you should lay at the Lord's feet. I ask that. Lord God, you would send your Holy Spirit into their lives, into their minds to reveal these things to, to them, the things that they need to just give over to you, that they don't need to be worried about. And I ask that you will highlight to them the things of God that you want them to focus on, the things that are going to serve you and things that are going to, things that are going to build up your kingdom, Lord God. And I ask that you will highlight to them the path that you want them to be on, that straight and narrow path, Lord God. So that they do not get uh, delayed, that they do not get strayed off the straight, do not do not stray off the straight and narrow path. <laughs> and I just ask that you will continue to guide them. Some of them have just been in confusion for maybe a couple days or a couple weeks. I ask that you will continue to send your spirit into their their life to just guide them, Lord God, so that they know that you're always with them. And not only do they know that you're always with them, but that they see it, Lord God. They see you. They see you walking beside them. And I ask that you will send them. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this right now. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you will send something into their life this week. This week in the name of Jesus, just to remind them and just to let them know that you're with them, that you have not forgotten them or forsaken them, but that you're walking right beside them and that you're still guiding them in the name of Jesus. I ask that you will send a divine sign into their life this week in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I love you all so much with the heart of Jesus. 
I always like to share with you that there is mentorship for you. There is a promise and mentorship for those of you who are seeking godly mentorship. It's a year mentorship. It's a beautiful journey. It's 12, it's 12 months and there's videos each week of the year along with daily devotionals and a community. Everyone that has gone through it, there are people who have made, th made it through an entire year and they have nothing but incredible, beautiful testimonies to share as a result of it. And the daily devotionals alone are just absolutely incredible and life-changing. For those of you who are looking to sow seed into fertile ground, or you heard something throughout this word that you want to plant seed into, I highly encourage you to do that because I do that. And I would never not share that with you because I know what it's done for my life. So if you want to do that, the Lord has placed it on your heart, there's a link below for you to do that. And there's other resources that are just incredible for you. There's even a roadmap. I haven't mentioned that in a while, but the roadmap is absolutely free. You download it. And as a result of downloading it, you're going to get sent a roadmap straight to your uh, inbox. And it's a quick guide that'll take you no more than five minutes to go through. And it'll help you determine where you are at on your journey with the Lord and what he's requiring of you next to go to your next level of glory. So I love you all. I ask that you will subscribe and hit the notification bell. That's so you're not missing out on these messages as I continue to release them and as the Lord places them on my heart. And I'll talk with you in the next one.